Hello guys, today we have an amazing topic to discuss. In my usual tutorials, I show you how to color grade a single image or create a specific look. But today I want to talk about how we can maintain color consistency across all your videos in your projects. Additionally, I will give you some useful tips on timeline level color management. So let's get started right away. On my timeline, I compiled clips from random shots I took on a trip last year. These shots were taken on a very sunny summer day within a few hours. So the color tones and the light levels are almost the same. First, I want to show you how to perform color management at the timeline level. So let's say all the footage you shot was taken with, a, with the same camera, meaning they all have the same color science. Instead of using CSDs on each clip, we can perform the Rec. 709 conversion at the timeline level. Let's apply this. Click on Project Settings, then go to the Color Management menu. Select DaVinci YRGB Color Managed from the Color Science menu. We don't want automatic color management, so uncheck this box. Then select Custom from the Color Processing mode. We will change three important settings here. Input color space is the color space of your camera. I shot this footage with a Sony camera using the SLAC3 profile, so I'm selecting s 3 Cine SLAC3 from this menu. So because I want to work in the DaVinci White Gamut color space, I'm choosing DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate as the timeline color space. Finally, for the output color space, I'm selecting Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. This way, all our footage will be transformed and we will make our color adjustments in the DaVinci White Gamut color space. Then click Save. You will see that all our footage has been converted to Rec. 709 and we can see it in the viewer as well. By the way, you don't have to do this step for color consistency. I'm sharing this because it's just an easier method. Okay, let's continue on the color page. What we need to do is very simple. Let's select a clip. I will continue with this one. I'm adding two more notes. The first note is for exposure and balance. The second note is for contrast. And the third note is for saturation. I'm going to open up the image using the offset, gamma gain and lift sliders until it looks right to me. This is before and this is after. Looking pretty nice. Then I go to the HDR wheels and I will use the temperature setting to adjust the white balance. This is before. This is after. It looks okay for now. Let's move on to the contrast node. I will increase the contrast a bit using the curve tool. I'm going to place a point in the shadow areas and pull it down slightly. Let's move this point up a bit to avoid clipping in the black areas. Place a point in the middle and another in the highlights. Similarly, I'm pulling this point down a bit. This is before and this is after. Okay. I also want to increase the contrast a bit from the primaries. It looks okay, but we can make some more adjustments in the balance node. I'm lowering the highlights and increasing the gain. All right, now let's continue with the saturation node. Again, I'm going to the HDR wheels. You can achieve a better saturation level by increasing the global saturation here. This is before and this is after. Yes, I think we have reached a pretty standard position. I'm doing a before and after and we have reached at this point with just three simple notes. Great. Now let's apply this grade to all of our footage. Click on clips, hold shift and select all your clips. Then right click on the graded clip and select apply grade from the menu. A small warning will appear saying that any existing grade on the other clips will be erased since we didn't grade them before. Click on replace. Now our small node tree will be applied to all our footage. Let's look at a few of them quickly. As you can see, all of them are generally at the same levels. Let's also check the skin tone on this clip. We can verify this on the vector scope. It's on the skin tone line. We can say it's within the correct range. After that, we should compare and adjust our footage using scopes to ensure consistency. Not all clips are going to match 100% even if they were shot within the same period of time. For example, this clip is a bit darker. Let's fix this quickly. On the top left, click on the highlight icon. Select the clip you want to compare from the bottom by holding Ctrl. Also, choose selected clips from this menu. This way we can see both clips side by side. Select waveform for a better view on the scopes. We can see that the second clip is darker. With the second clip selected, click on the balance node and increase the gain a bit. Lower the lift a bit too. 
Okay, they are almost at the same levels. After quickly checking all the clips for their exposure and balance, you can proceed. Click on the highlight icon and select all clips. This way you can view all your videos together and if something doesn't look right, you can fix it. You can also use the light box in the top right for this. For example, there's a dark area in this clip. We can fix it with just a simple window. Just ensure there isn't a huge light or tone difference across all your clips. And I think they all look okay right now. So let's continue. Now we have reached the point where we can be creative. Select all the clips again, right click any of them and choose add into a new group from this menu. You can name this group if you want. Uh, it's not important to me right now. So I click OK. Now we have grouped all our clips. When you click on the clip menu in the top right, you will see two new options, group pre-clip and group post-clip. This means any changes we make in the group pre-clip will affect all clips before the color grade we just did. Similarly, any changes in the group post-clip will affect all clips after the grade. I hope this is clear. I believe you will understand it better when I show you in practice. Let's select group post-clip. We will make changes here. I'm adding another note. The first note will be the look note and the second will be the color slice. Let's add one more note, just in case we need it later. I am selecting the look note. We can create different looks in many ways. This time I will use the curves tools. Unlink the color channels by clicking the chain icon here. Then select the red channel, hold Alt and create a point. Then pull it down a bit. Create another point in the middle and push it up. Then select the green channel, one point down, one point in the middle. Let's look closer to see the effect. I'm pulling it in the opposite direction of the red channel. Finally, let's do the same for the blue channel. One point down, one point in the middle. This point goes up. This is before and this is after. It may not be very obvious on YouTube, but these changes create a slight split tone effect in the highlights and it cleans up the magenta tones. Let's continue. Go to the hue versus hue section. Select all colors from the bottom. Let's use this image for this. Increase teal and green and lower purple a bit. Let's change the red tone a little too. Okay. When adjusting hue versus hue, it's important that skin tones remain unaffected. Overall, it looks good right now. After that, continue with hue versus saturation. Again, select all the colors. This time, create a point between red and yellow and increase it. Similarly, pull up the blue, green and yellow tones. This is before and this is after. Our footage is starting to look more vibrant. Finally, go to the saturation versus luminous section, pull the last point down like this and put a point in the middle so you can create a curve in the midtones. This adjustment increases color density in the highlights. Now let's move to the color slice node. Let's continue with this clip, lower the density of yellow, green and cyan and increase the saturation level. I will do the same for red, but only very slightly. Lower the magenta levels overall. Let's make small adjustments for skin tone by looking at this image. Overall, our footage looks very nice. I think they belong in the same world. From this point, if necessary, you can make minor adjustments at the clip level. For example, we mentioned a dark area in this clip. Let's fix it quickly. We are on the clip level now. Add a new node, select the circle window from the window menu, adjust its position and size and increase the gain. This is before and this is after. Uh, I mean, it made a significant difference. Of course, it can be refined further, but I think you get the idea. Now let's see our footage together. Switch to the group level. This is before and this is after. As you can see, all the footage is affected the same way and they belong to the same world. I mean, this is the important thing. Despite having different light values, the green, the blue and yellow tones are consistent in every clip. Let's show it in a four up view on the big screen before and after. I think the difference is very clear. Finally, if you want to add an effect, you can use this node. For instance, let's add glow, but be aware it might slow down your computer. I'm making quick, simple adjustments on the glow effect. And here is our final result. Let's see them all together in the full screen. This is before the group post clip adjustments and this is after. I think it looks lovely. 
With these changes, we managed to bring out warm, beautiful tones, reminiscent of summer. In other words, this version is dull, lifeless and lacking emotion. But this version is much more natural and vibrant. Okay, that's all for today guys. I think we achieved a great result once again. I hope it wasn't too confusing or too complicated for you. If you have any questions, please write them in the comments. If you feel like you have learned something, I will be very happy if you subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video. Until then, take care.